how how is this the best episode so far in the entire show no action no dramatic intense music no finale just a little side story is the best episode in the entire show <laughs> you gotta be kidding me I enjoyed it I really did it really had me thinking it really had me um wanting to see what they were up to with this little robot and everything. I didn't expect the show to go this way, but since it did, I was happy that it did. And I kind of wish it did do that. I kind of mean, kind of wish that Black Rock Shooter was more of just um, the Empress on her own, driving, and probably seeing people here or there, like kind of like Kashar and Sins, where he's just traveling around this forsaken humanity world. And picking up random people and you see go through their problems and it can reflect on Empress herself. I would have loved if Black Rock Shore was in that direction. She's on her way to redeem humanity by helping them out by destroying these creatures. But it would have been better too, it was more of an episodic where you would have her meeting different people in different situations and having some self reflection on humanity and stuff, questioning the morality, who is in the right and who's in the wrong here. When it comes to whether saving humanity or helping out these AI systems, it would have been better if Black Rock Shore was like that. Just by looking at this episode alone, I would like more episodes like these. Hey, it felt like something I would have read right out of Nier. I'm dead serious. It felt like out of Nier, you know, you're going to a certain mission, you know, you're stopping by because, you know, Black Trike is down and everything. It needs to be repaired. You know, I saw a timeline because those giant square cube things that are very poisonous now are on their way and can't destroy all of them because it also shows that they can't win every battle, especially with that many coming around. It's like, it's like a herd it's just coming by, man. Imagine playing a video game. Imagine playing a good Black Rock shooter video game. And you see this giant herd, these giant cubes that have poison. You can't get near them, so you have to find a way to take shelter so they won't notice you or anything like that. Or if you're high level enough, you can take them out or something or miss, lead them to another direction. Imagine a good Black Rock shooter video game. The only one we had was one on PSP, which I still enjoy, but I think this will be much better, you know, better graphics and stuff like that. But I don't think we'll ever get that. <laughs> It'd be nice. So anyways, um... Them just from rebuilding parts from call, call, the carnal just having the flashbacks of his child and his wife, how the child was kind of a tomboy, you know, like sports and marshmallows. And he's seeing all these things that are making him reminisce in a way where he doesn't really want to remember because he felt like he's lost hope. But until Empress said, you should be joyful that she's still alive. So that means there's still a chance for you to actually help her out. And at least try. So he's getting some hope there. I enjoyed that part. But as far I didn't think what happens when they reach the library and they find a certain robot called Andy. A very friendly robot. Naive robot. Who just wanted company. You know. It had his family a bunch of offline dead robots. You know. Just in there. Even the infantry unit they called Thomas was there. And it didn't believe that Thomas was a threat because Thomas was offline until it went back online saying that, yes, you thought Thomas was harmless because he was offline. But since he was back online again, it could have called in other troops to go their way and to cause damage. So they did it for the best, despite how Andy was kind of upset about it. Even the showing Andy showing the family and how they wanted to do baseball and was doing it incorrectly. They wanted to do baseball because I guess sports in a way do bring people together. Even if you look at it now, how crazy some people take it, especially during the Super Bowl time where whenever a team wins or loses, uh, the fans start riding across the streets. It's still enjoyable. It brings people together. People who even watch sports will come together and watch the Super Bowl. You know, bring all the food and family and friends over and just watch it and have a good time. Enjoy the commercials. Enjoy the halftime show. Or even start to get into football yourself. You know, that's how it happens. The football can bring in new fans with the Super Bowl for how big it is, which is great. Well, anyways, getting off sidetracked here. Um... And it, it didn't even, t even the part it was talking to about the the triac system, the the thing where there's five guys at the end, another dude at the other part, and you have to decide which you one you want to save. If you want to save the five dudes or one guy, and of course the system chose to choose 
the five guys to save and kill itself to please humanity in a way. But in even where um, Empress asked the other two, asked Dead Master and Strength on what they would do, um, Strength was like, save the five guys, and Dead Master was like, it depends on who is on what side. Brandis, if Empress was the one person and there was the five dudes, she said she would probably save the Empress in a way. Which makes sense, you know, anyone can put into a situation depending on who's on it. For instance, you have a very important person who could lead into humanity with a smart idea that seems to be saved, but yet you have these five workers. It may seem inhumane, but this dude will provide more for the future. So therefore, they would want you to save that dude over the five workers. It all depends on the situation and the individual who has to control of who to save and who not to save. It all depends, people. It really does. So it had me thinking a lot. Even to the part where they laugh and say, we'll see you again, Andy, and then um, freaking Charlotte shows up and just kills Andy. Like, why? This is why I felt like, it felt like Yoko Taro wrote this, you know? It did. I think it would have been better if they came back and they saw Andy dead and they found out it was Charlotte that did. Now, that would be real broke Yoko Taro writing right there. But this is, um, this is... People were making jokes about Charlotte, saying, I don't care what happens to Charlotte. I hope she dies. <laughs> I kind of agree right there. Like, you didn't you do that. And yeah, she's she's an Avenger. Because, you know, and then someone wrote, wow, looks like, um, damn, Charlotte really wanted that Mr. Um, Smiley that badly, huh? <laughs> Was she a little bitch of Smiley or something? She's like, oh, Mr. Smiley, why would you do me? <laughs> He gone now. Which is finally gone. Mm. Now she's on a revenge war prep. <laughs> you stole my man. Now I'm gonna kill everyone you love. I'm just giving me scenarios. It's, it's just it's just hilarious. What I'm thinking about. She was just cracking jokes out Charlotte whether they just want her to kill because what they did to Andy, or they're like, wow, she's a, she's avenging she's avenging that robot dick, huh? <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah, that that was that was nice. <laughs> but yes, I still can't believe that the best episode is pretty much in a way a filler episode and stuff. And of course the talk of Lighthouse Nine saying how there's nothing there or um talking about why did the humanist unit I I decided to go rogue and stuff. It, a lot happened, you know, and of course the flashback that um, Empress had about the past where she was with the other two having, I guess, a tea party or something. Um, yeah, I brought up some familiar questions. So not only did it question your, your philosophy of humanity, but at the same time brought in more questions and an interesting cliffhanger as well. This was a nice episode all together, you know, to make a nice story. And I kind of wish it did more of that with the show itself. Well, unfortunately, you probably won't get that since this is like a midway point for the series. So... There you go. <laughs> so anyway, it's like that just episode. Really good. Definitely the best episode so far. By far. I mean by far. So anyways, that's what I got. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been Macron on Anime. Signing out.